My name is Michael Godfrey. Um, friends call me Mike. My fiance and my son, they're certainly the, the best things uh, in my life, the best things that ever happened to me. Um, they really keep me grounded and centered. Um, I know I love them to, to pieces. lived in British Columbia for a lot, a lot of my life, a number of years. I um, was a professional uh, circuit mountain biker. Used to do the, the circuit out there. Um, did a lot of downhill stuff, that was my favorite, where we'd sort of get to a ski hill, and take the chairlift to the top, um, and then we'd see who could make it to the, the bottom the fastest. Everyone would have their, their own, you know, separate times on the track, and, and it was great. So mountain biking, um, you know, was just the best part of my life. It was, you know, everyone searches for that one thing that, that makes them happy and makes them motivated, and that was mine, you know, biking on a nice sunny day, um, you know, the wind through your hair and all that stuff, um, you know, getting up good exercise. And this day in particular was a beautiful day, just a bit of cloud cover. Um, you know, I was I actually had one of my best times ever on that hill. Um, and then it and then it happened. I noticed something was wrong. Um, I had a lot of pain, uh, and and um, I felt like I was coming down with the flu. Um, the health team, the first aid team, I guess, uh, told me that I should really be in the hospital. And um, one of the attendants, sort of, uh, who had seen it before, um, told me he thought I might have. Um, Crohn's, um, which is actually sort of like a, a cousin, same family of things. Um, he was wrong, um, but not by much. Uh, they took me to the hospital, um, and very quickly I was in surgery, um, removing uh, my entire large intestine uh, from one end to the other. Uh, you know, after the incident, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. I now have something called post-operative ulcerative colitis. I went through three surgeries for that. It took them a long time to, to sort of figure out why I was having these complications. Still didn't really get a great answer, but um, yeah, it was tough. <clears throat> it was tough. I would, just, I would watch what you eat, though. I would. You know, initially I was going to tackle this medically in BC. Through some of my, my cyclist friends, I've heard that uh, <clears throat> through, through people they knew, they knew that the Colitis Foundation of Nova Scotia was actually uh, really good and could get you into the medical professionals a lot sooner. And that was all I needed to hear because I really needed help at that point. I love my son. Playing with my son is the best part of my day. And I get to do that because I, I work from home and I, um, I write uh, on my laptop, you know, maybe two or three hours. When he goes down for a nap, I'll write. I've got a job writing for uh, an online publication and the, the local newspaper, um, doing their sports columns for them. That's been challenging, you know, having to learn how to how to write all over again. I used to write a bit when I was in high school and sort of left it behind for a long time. It's not, it doesn't really pay the money I'd like it to pay, um, of course. Um, but, you know, we do okay. You know, we, so we pay the bills. Um, we have each other. And, uh, you know. Two times a month I have to go to the pharmacy to pick up my prescriptions, you know, that help with things like the pain and the bloating. Also sort of, uh, sort of allows me, I guess, to eat things I wouldn't normally have been able to eat prior. I have pain, not every day, <clears throat> but certainly every week I have pain. Um, so it sort of helps me feel normal, I guess. Overall, it, you know, it helps me feel normal. My name is Byron Sarson. I'm a pharmacist and have been for a number of years, like 46. 
Retired three times, but uh, get bored being retired, so I'm back doing part-time work. Ulcerative colitis seems to run in age groups. Uh, some of it's worse at those that are 15 to 30, and again, when they're at about 50 to 70. And why that happens, we don't know. The disease involves the bowels, and uh, abdominal pain and, and uh, so on is, is prevalent. Uh, there are other symptoms as well, like gastrointestinal bleeding and so on and so forth. We don't want to emphasize on those. We would like to think that there would be a way for some people to get rid of the, of the condition, and there is, but it's surgical. We have a chap that comes in here. His name is Michael Godfrey. We see his medications for him and, and check with him periodically to see if there are any changes, either better or worse. And mind you, as long as, as they control their, their diet and the things of that nature so they don't eat fats, and there, there's a list of things that are easily found, uh, for you that uh, if you avoid, avoid some of those things, you can live a very normal life. And that's what we like to see. You going for a walk? Look at Charlie. Look at Charlie. He does it all the time. He locks himself in rooms. <laughs> I took my son out biking uh, yesterday. Um, he goes down those hills, which is a guy I used to do. You know, I'm holding on to him the whole time. He's too small for that, but, you know, it's great. <laughs> we, you know, we have each other. We've all got each other. And that's, I think, what I've learned throughout this whole thing is that <clears throat> as long as you have your family and, and those who are closest to you, um, you'll be okay. Life will be, life will be okay. You always start a, a long distance bike race full of hope and strong. In the middle it can get really hard and it can really test your, your, your will. Um, and at the end you realize no matter where you finish it doesn't matter because you've done it. You win either way. <laughs>